In this video, I'm going through the document part 091, Exercises Numerical Methods. I'll be going over solutions to these exercises. As with all the exercise videos, I recommend that you do these exercises before looking at the solutions given here. Link to the exercise document is given in the video description. These exercises will require the use of the Symbolics package. That does not come with the cheapest version of MATLAB, so it may not be available to you. Octave users, you will need to download the symbolic package for Octave and then make sure that it is loaded. I show you how to do that in a video that I think is four videos back. And I also give some more information about that in this video's description. All right, first question here, use sims to put the symbolic expression m times c squared into a variable named e. The output should look like what's in the comments here. First, I'm gonna declare two symbolic variables, m and c separated by a space. And then I set a new variable e equal to m times c squared. There are no calculations happening here. m times c squared is a symbolic expression being put into the variable e, and that's it. I run it, and there are my results right there. Moving on to the next question. Expand the following quadratic, display the results, then use the simplify function to put it back together, and the output should again look like what's given in the comments here. So I've already set you up with the symbolic variables and the quadratic right here. So all I need to do is set quadratic equal to expand, parentheses quadratic, and then after that, I'm gonna set quadratic equal to simplify quadratic. So I'm replacing the previous values of quadratic with the result of expand, and then with the result of simplify. And displaying it out, we get exactly what we wanted to get right there in the command window. Moving down to the next question, set up a symbolic equation for a unit circle, x squared plus y squared equals one, then solve it for y. And then again, I give what the solution should look like in the comments here. So I'm gonna declare two symbolic variables, x and y, and then I'm going to, I mean, I just copied and pasted from the comments there, but I need to make some changes. I'm going to put x squared plus y squared equals one into a variable named equation, and the second equal sign needs to be two equal signs because that is indicating mathematical equals in a symbolic equation. So I put that into the equation there, and now I'm going to solve the equation. And I'm gonna solve it for y. So I say solve parentheses equation comma, what am I solving it for? Solving it for y. I get two results because of the square on y. Use substitution to evaluate y equals mx plus b when m is a half, x is three, and b is negative four. And I've already got a lot of it set up right here. Now do not set m equal to 0.5, x equal to three, b equal to negative four. That is not correct, don't do that. Yes, that is an easier way to calculate the same thing that we're going to calculate, but we're trying to practice symbolics here. So I'm gonna create a new variable named answer and set it equal to the substitution on y of, in curly brackets, m comma x comma b, and I'm going to replace each of those values, comma, another set of curly brackets, with, in the corresponding order, 0.5 comma three comma negative four. And there I run it and I get my result, negative 2.5. Now that is actually a symbolic right there. So I'm going to set answer equal to, then use the double function to convert from a symbolic to a numeric type. Now you can see the formatting is a little bit different. Uh, it's not terribly different, right? But I prefer to have things in that numeric format rather than the symbolic format. And I encourage you to do the same. The following expression has roots of negative six and three. In other words, the solution to x squared plus three x minus 18 equals zero is x equals three and x equals negative six. Which of the following finds these solutions? So I give uh, the code right here, and then there's four different options. And of course you could run it, but I want you to try and think about which of these is the correct answer. And I'm actually just gonna go through and display all of them. You might think that factor is the right answer, but that's not actually correct. It's actually A, it's actually solve. But let's display each of them and see what happens. Now, I didn't even realize that roots was a built-in MATLAB function until I created it as a false answer for this question, um, but that does not give us what we want. We try expand right here, and we get the exact same thing because it's already in expanded format. We try factor, and we do get something related to what we're looking for. We get a vector of symbolic expressions containing x plus six and then x minus three, because if you multiply those two things together, you get the expression we started with. But solve is what we want, because when you solve an expression, what the solve function does is it sets that expression equal to zero and then solves for the variable. That's just how solve works. What is the result after this code runs? Answer in a comment below. 
Okay, so what I was trying to do here was I was trying to just practice substitutions and get a bunch of words. So I start with the word back, b times a times c times k, and then I perform subsequent substitutions. Now, I didn't get the words that I wanted because the order actually gets changed by the substitution function, but it's just a substitution exercise. So if you can try and do this in your head, if you do it correctly, well then you have a pretty good idea of what the substitution is doing. I start with subs y comma b comma f. So in y, replace the b with f, and I get instead of back, fac. Now that's not actually a word, and it's close to a curse word, but that's what I was going for. And then I substitute the k for an e, and what I get is face, f-a-c-e. And then I replace the c with an r, and I get fare, like the fare that you would pay for a taxi. And then I replace the a with an o, and I get four, like what you would yell if you're playing golf. When they display out, they actually display in alphabetical order, so I didn't quite get what I wanted, but it's still just a good substitution exercise. Moving on to the next question. Given a mass of 0.1 kilograms and an energy output of 9 times 10 to the 15th joules, use solve, subs, and double to calculate the speed of light, c. So we've already got our symbolic variables and our equation set up. I'm going to reuse the c variable by setting c equal to solve the equation for c. Got to spell solve correctly there. And then again, I'm going to replace the result, replace what was in c with c equals subs c. And I'm substituting out the m and the e in curly brackets. And what I'm replacing them with is 0.1 and then that large number of joules. Finally, I'm going to get my result as a numeric value, and I'm just going to keep setting C equal to the result, replacing the previous value. If you wanted to keep it around, you could just use different variable names, but you have to be very careful. When in doubt, don't hesitate to print out your variables just using a display command. You might think you know what the value of a variable is, but it's really easy to lose track of that stuff, because without display, you're not going to see it. It's not displayed out on the screen otherwise. All right, now I run my code here, and I do get two different results. Now, the positive result is the one that I want, but the good news is that on line 97, at least, C is just a vector of two numbers. So I'm going to index into C to get that first result, and there is the speed of light. I do apologize, I do not recall what the units are on that. Maybe someone can just tell me in the comments. I assume it's like kilometers per second or something. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what that unit is. All right, the next question is very short and easy. Use diff to subtract neighboring pairs of values in the following vector. So I've got v equals these arbitrary numbers here. And I'm just gonna say diff parentheses v because subtracting neighboring values is what diff does when you give it a numeric vector. Three minus one is two, seven minus three is four, 12 minus seven is five. And I'm gonna move right on down to the last question here. Display the indefinite integral of the symbolic expression in the variable a, and I've already got a set up right here then determine the area under the curve between one and four. I apologize, I realize now that when I recorded this, I didn't actually display the indefinite integral. It would just be like DISP parentheses int parentheses a, but I'm just gonna skip right to finding the area under the curve. Create a new variable named answer, set it equal to int a comma one comma four. This will give the area under the curve a from the x value of one to the x value of four, and there it is right there but I would prefer it in a numeric format, so I'm gonna use the double function to convert answer to a numeric value. And there I get my result right here. And that wraps us up for part 091, Exercises Numerical Methods. In the next set of videos, we're gonna look at interpolation and then curve fitting.